Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn some great vocabulary, so let's get started. First, this is a rug. This is a rug. But what if you have a small rug in front of your door by the entrance? That's not a rug, that's called a mat. It's called a doormat. That little piece of carpet or other material that's in front of your door for people to wipe their feet off on, for people to clean their shoes on, that's called a doormat. And this thing too, this is also a mat. This is called a placemat. You put your plate on it, it's called a placemat. This is a mat. This is a placemat. It goes on your dining room table, like this. Placemat. How do you pronounce the word mat? Mat. Use the short A sound like black cat. Mat. This is a placemat. It goes on your dining room table. And what about the letter T? The letter T at the end of the word mat is a stop T. We don't say mat. We stop the air. We don't release the sound. Mat. Mat. This is a placemat. It goes on your dining room table. Hey, what are those boots? Are those rubber boots? Yeah, these are rubber boots, but they're also called rain boots. And you can also call them galoshes. Let's talk about the pronunciation. Ga, like up and cup, gala. It's an open sound, like stop and hot, galoshes. These are galoshes. I don't have any galoshes. Do you have any galoshes? Good job. So these are galoshes, or you can say these are rain boots, or these are rubber boots. And you wear them in the rain. I own more pairs of galoshes than heels. Put on your galoshes and your coat. It's cold out. We need galoshes for winter. Well, he could be in his room, jumping up and down on his bed, wearing a red hat and galoshes. You can wear my rain boots and my hat. And my scarf. I was stepped on by rubber boots. I'll have you know, I owned more rubber boots than heels. Mm. Hey, Kevin, what is that? This? Yep. Ah, this is a trivet. Trivet. Use the short I like this is, and the V sound, triv. Trivet. It starts with TR, so we make the ch sound like chicken, together with the R. Ch, ch, chur. Trivet. This is a trivet. It's for putting hot pans on. And it's made of cork. Cork is the material it's made of. This trivet is made of cork. It's a cork trivet. Let me demonstrate. It's a hot pot, so you put it on the trivet. Because if you don't, it might burn the counter. So it protects the counter. Oh, I the see. The trivet protects the counter. Like this. This is the kitchen sink. And this kitchen doesn't have a dishwasher but it has a dish rack. This is a dish rack. So at first, I wash the dishes by hand, and then I put the dishes on the rack, like this. Why do you put the dishes on the dish rack? I put the dishes on the dish rack to let them dry. Oh, okay. This is a rack too, but it's a special rack. It's a wine rack. So if you like wine, you might have a wine rack, and you can put wine bottles on the rack. This is a rack too, but it's not for your dishes. This rack is for clothes, and you can put this rack in your bathroom. So what's it called? It's called a drying rack. Do you have a drying rack in your house? No, I don't. But for example, if your towel is wet, you can hang your towel and you can let it dry on the drying rack. Hey, look what I found. What's this called? Remember the question, what's this called? I cannot say, how is it called? I need the question word, what? What's this called? It's called an hourglass. An hourglass. Not a sand clock, it's called an hourglass. And you'll hear this word hourglass, for example, an hourglass figure. They say a woman has an hourglass figure. Does this look like a woman? Not really. Life drifts away. Like grains of sand through an hourglass. Number 10 is the hourglass. But rib removal is actually a thing. It started in the Victorian era when women used to wear corsets to achieve an hourglass figure. That brought about the padded shoulder look, creating a sharp hourglass figure. Hey Lisa, where's your purse? My purse is on the bed. Remember, if something is on the blanket, we say 
it's on the bed. My purse is on the bed. But if you are under the blanket, then you are in bed. And I'm gonna make this bed so no one will know that I was in bed. Did you make the bed right? I think so. Here we have a toilet. Princeton toilet. Let's talk about the different parts. This is a toilet lid. And this is a toilet seat. This toilet's not working because it's at Ikea. So, remember, in American English, we don't say, where's the toilet? I need to use the toilet. We say bathroom or restroom. Where's the restroom? I need to use the bathroom. Don't say, where's the toilet? Not in American English. So, this toilet, what is the action? The verb is flush. Flush the toilet. Sometimes my children don't remember to flush the toilet. So I always tell them, don't forget, flush the toilet. You need to flush the toilet, really. So let's look at the difference between a trivet, remember, this is a trivet, and a coaster. Well, they're both circles. Uh, these are both made of cork. They don't have to be, but this is a cork trivet, and this is a cork coaster. This is a coaster and this is a trivet. The trivet is for putting something hot on to protect your table or counter. And a coaster is to protect your table or counter from a cup. You put a cup on the coaster. So these are called coasters. Use the long O sound like no and go. Co, coasters. These are called coasters. They protect your table and you put your cup or glass on the coaster. A coaster, like a roller coaster? That's different. It's the same word, coaster, like roller coaster, but that coaster is a completely different coaster. Now let's talk about roller coaster. Roller coaster comes from the verb coast. Coast is when you go with no force pushing you. Example, you're driving your car and you put it in neutral. You don't touch the gas. That's coasting. You're coasting because there's no force pushing you. And that's why we call roller coasters, roller coasters. Because there's no force pushing them, it's gravity making the roller coaster go. That's why they're called roller coasters, because they coast. Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Recently we made a video about this. This material, this is called wicker. This is a wicker basket. And people had questions about other words that were similar. So we're gonna talk about those today. So this is wicker. And this is a candle. Uh oh. This is a candle. And this little thing here, that's called the wick. The candle has a wick. Every candle has a wick. Pronunciation, wick. Use the short is sound like this is. This is the wick of the candle. Eh, eh, wick. Not weak with a long E like green beans. I don't feel good, I feel weak. Weak is the opposite of strong week like this week and next week it has the same pronunciation as this week and next week so that's week and this is wick different pronunciation use the short is sound like this is this is a wick and we have the word wicked wicked has the short is sound too and we pronounce the ed like ed ed together wicked wicked is the same as evil it means very bad like a bad, evil witch. You can say, she's a wicked witch. Remember, this is wicker, and this is a wicker basket. And this is a wick. And wicked is the same as evil. It's very bad. Hey, Kevin, what are these? Ah, these are jars. But they're not normal jars. They're not regular jars. These are special jars because they have this special seal how you open and close them. These are called mason jars. People store food in mason jars. Pronunciation, jar. Use the j sound like juice and jump, and r like car and far. Together, jar. This is a jar. This is a mason jar. It's a special kind of jar. And what is this? This looks like a big jar, but it's not a jar. It's called a drink dispenser. And this thing, this is called a tap. It actually has two names. You can call it a tap or a spigot. So tap with a short a sound like apple and black cat, tap and spigot. Spigot, use the short is sound like this is. This is also called a spigot. Hey Kevin, 
What is this? Ah, this is a pitcher. It's a glass pitcher. I say it's a glass pitcher because it's made of glass. It's made of glass. Use the preposition of. This pitcher is made of glass, so I call it a glass pitcher. I use it to serve drinks. I found another pitcher. It's not plastic, it's glass. This is a glass pitcher. Remember, pronunciation, pitcher, pitcher. Use the short is sound like this is, plus the ch sound for chicken. Pitcher, this is a glass pitcher. I found another pitcher, but this is made of metal. So this is a metal pitcher, not a glass pitcher. This is a metal pitcher because it's made of metal. This is a metal pitcher. What about that thing on the wall? Oh yeah, this is a picture. It sounds like picture, but it's a little different. When I say picture, I have the k, k sound, but I don't release it. So it's a stop sound. I stop the air. I say picture. I make the position of the K, the K, but I don't release the K sound. I just make the position and I stop the air. This is a picture. So it's like you don't hear the K, but the position is there. Picture. These are pictures. There are a lot of pictures on the wall. So this is a picture and this is a picture. Close, but not exactly the same pronunciation. Picture, picture. Picture, picture. I love my kitchen because I have cabinets and they're very spacious. I love these spacious cabinets. Pronunciation, spacious. Use a long A like pay and say, spacious. The C makes a sh, sh sound like shoes and show, spacious. Use a relaxed sound at the end, uh, uh, spacious. I love my spacious cabinets. And I have these, a lot of these. What are these called? These are called drawers. The pronunciation is not like the spelling. Pronunciation, DR makes a J sound, J, J, plus the R together, J, drawers. Or like door and floor, drawer. One drawer, two drawers. I have a lot of drawers. And what do I keep in my drawers? What do I keep in this drawer? I keep silverware. I keep my silverware in the drawer. This is called silverware. Forks, knives, where are my spoons? I don't know, but it's all called silverware. It's not countable. I cannot say one silverware and two silverwares, just silverware. So I keep my silverware in the drawer. Where do you keep your silverware? Very good. And what is this? This is a big island, but it's not an island in the ocean. It's an island in your kitchen. Remember, the S is silent. It's not Iceland, it's island. This is a big island. It's an island in your kitchen. It's extra counter space. And I made a friend here today. It looks like a hand puppet, but it's not a hand puppet. This is an oven mitt. It's an oven mitt. Remember, it's not a mitten, it's just a mitt. This is an oven mitt. It's for picking up hot pans so you don't burn your hands. This is an oven mitt. Hey, Kevin, what is this? Ah, this is a dish rag. You can also call it a washcloth if it's in your bathroom to wash your body in the bathtub. That's a washcloth, but this is for dishes, so we say it's a dish rag. Pronunciation, rag. Use a short ass sound like black cat. This is a dish rag for washing dishes. So this is a rag. What about this? Oh, that's a rug. Rug has a short uh sound like cup and up. This is a rug, rug, and this is a rag. Rag, rug. Hey, look what I found. What's this called? Remember the question, what's this called? I cannot say, how is it called? I need the question word, what? What's this called? It's called an hourglass. An hourglass. Not a sand clock, it's called an hourglass. And you'll hear this word hourglass, for example, an hourglass figure. They say a woman has an hourglass figure. Does this look like a woman? Not really. Life drifts away. 
like grains of sand through an hourglass. Number 10 is the hourglass. But rib removal is actually a thing. It started in the Victorian era when women used to wear corsets to achieve an hourglass figure. That brought about the padded shoulder look, creating a sharp hourglass figure. Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. These are called crates. They're using the crates as bookshelves, but these things are called crates. You can also call them soap boxes because a long time ago, they used these to carry soap. So you can call this a crate or a soap box. And we have an expression in English, get off your soap box. It means stop preaching to me. Because a long time ago, people used to stand on these and preach to people in the town square, in the center of town. They would preach and stand on these. And now we have the expression, get off your soap box. And it means stop preaching to me. Get off your they soap box, Lou. Lou, it's a shower. We can take care of this. You stand on your soapbox, judging everyone, so sure that they're judging you. Can't you leave your soapbox at home just once? They're coming through. What? Go take your soapbox somewhere else. And I will now come down off my soapbox.